Hello everyone, my name is Doug Hills and this is the Manga Studio Guide. Not everything in Manga Studio requires an entire episode to explain, but I don't want to ignore them either. So instead, I'm going to highlight a few of these functions and commands in the first of several quick tips episode I'm going to create for the series. Several of these tips are courtesy of the latest version of Manga Studio. If you don't see any of the things that I cover in your copy of the program, head to the link in the show notes below and download your free copy of Manga Studio or Clip Studio directly from Smith Micro. Just make sure that you have your serial number handy as it's required as proof of purchase before you can download your update. Now, let's get started. If you're working on a piece with screen tones, here's a really cool trick to see where you've laid your tones down more clearly. So in this piece, I have my inks layer, and then I have three sets of tone layers, one for her hair, one for her shirt, and one for the shadow area. Now, normally if I wanted to see which layer I happen to be working on, I would have to look over here on the layers palette, but Manga Studio added a new feature, view, show tone area, show selected tone area. And now the layer I happen to be focused on, in this case the shadow, is highlighted in blue. And I can switch to the shirt layer or the hair layer and they're all highlighted in blue. And I can show all tone layers at once by coming up to the main menu and selecting view, show tone area, show all tone areas. And now every tone layer that happens to be on the piece will be highlighted in blue. And it's really helpful, and I'll zoom in, and I'll make sure I'm on the shirt layer, because it helps me see if there were spots that I happened to miss when I initially laid down the tones. For example, there's a couple of slivers here that I can now fill in with my pen tool. Or if I happen to draw and didn't notice I got a little bit outside of the, the lines, it'll highlight here and then I can switch to my transparent color and erase. If I wanted to have all of my tone layers highlighted but still separate them by color, I come over to layer properties and I scroll down to area color. And to demonstrate, I'll switch over to her, her hair color. I click the area color triangle here and this brings up the operating system's color picker. And I select a color, let's go red and hit okay. And now the hair layer or the one that's at 40% density is now set to red. And if I drew any place else on this layer, it will show up in red. Same thing, let's change her shirt to green. And now I know when I draw, okay, I'm on the, the hair layer, or if I'm drawing and I realize, okay, I'm on the, the shirt layer or the 20% density layer. And that helps me see where my tones are and with the color cue, know which layer I happen to be working on. Now let's talk about making color selections. Now normally, if I wanted to pick a color from the piece I happen to be working on, I'd come over to the color picker tool, select color picker or eyedropper, and then select from the canvas the color that I want to work with. However, I would only be limited to what's on the canvas. I couldn't pick from any place else on the Manga Studio window, for example, until now. Edit, obtain screen color, and now this little preview window pops up along with the eyedropper. And now not only can I select from the canvas, but I can select any place else or even the toolbar. And as you see, the preview window not only lets you know like what color you are uh, currently hovering over, but you get its respective red, green, and blue values. So you could always like copy those down and add them in later on with the color slider tab here. Now let's talk about what happens if you have uh, an example in a browser or you have an image that you have on a preview program but is not compatible with the subview palette here. Edit, obtain screen color by hiding windows, makes Manga Studio disappear temporarily and it shows the desktop. And you can see I have this picture of a mountainside here, El Capitan and the preview window is still there. So I can pick from this screen or I can pick off of the desktop. And again, anything that happens to be active on the desktop other than Manga Studio. This is something to keep in mind. Only the stuff that is active will be shown. So if you have stuff that's minimized or hidden, it will not show up and you will not be able to bring it up on the screen while it is in this mode. You would have to bring it up and then use the obtain by hiding windows function. Let's go with this orange, click. And now my foreground color is orange. 
So now that I have my new foreground color, I'm going to go and change my line art color. Normally, what I would do is come over to the layer properties palette and click layer color, and it would change the layer color to whatever the layer color is currently set to. But it is not a permanent thing. I could easily turn this on or off. If I wanted to do a permanent change, I come up here, edit, change color of line to drawing. Now, every bit of art that happens to be on the currently selected layer will now turn into whatever my foreground color is, in this case, orange. And this is the other different thing compared to using the layer color option. If I go to my pen tool and I switch back to black, I can draw in black. And I can switch to a different color, edit, change color of line, and now everything turns to, you know, a burnt orange. If I switch to the lasso tool, I can make even make a selection. Switch to black, edit, change color of line to drawing, and my selection now turns to, in this case, black. So it's a really cool way to quickly change the colors of a layer you happen to be working on, either in whole or in part. I should also note, and I'm going to flatten this image, layer, Merge layers. If I hit edit, change color of line to drawing, it pretty much treats it like a giant fill. All the black and all the white and all the colors that happen to be on that one layer are now this greenish yellow color. And finally, let's say that I only want to recolor a portion of the line art, but I want a little more finesse than to select and use the convert color option. Come over to the layers palette and I click the lock transparency button here. You'll see this icon up here. Now, if I go to my pen tool and I'll go to a red color, and I'll zoom in. I can draw, but the only parts that are affected, and I'll even hide the screen tone so you can see this. The only parts that are affected are the places that have painted pixels on them. If I turn lock transparency off, I can draw just like I had before. I could even turn it back on, switch to a different color, and draw over this section, and even the sections that I just drew in red. Now, I went and created an additional layer in red just to kind of demonstrate why I think that this option is useful, especially if you're working on a color piece. Now, right now, you can see that the black really stands out against the red of her hair. But if I wanted to have a slightly more subtle approach, I would take the hair color, maybe go a little darker, but not full on black, come up to my layer with the lock transparent pixel turned on, and now... I can have a more subtle effect in the, the line art. I can even have it lighter here and then go a little darker against the shadow areas. And I just think this is a very useful thing to have if you want to have more subtlety and a slightly, maybe almost a more painterly look while still retaining the line art in your piece. And with that, I'm going to wrap up this quick tips episode of the Manga Studio Guide. There are going to be a lot more of these episodes because there are a lot of these functions and commands that don't necessarily require an entire episode, but they're really still important to know. So as you play around with these commands and functions, I really do hope that you find them helpful and they enhance your workflow just that much more. This episode of the Manga Studio Guide would not exist if it weren't for Patreon subscribers like the ones you see here. If you would like to support the Manga Studio Guide and help me keep these videos free for everyone, you too can become a Patreon subscriber and get early access to each new episode. You could also purchase books, rulers, page templates, private lessons, or just throw some money in the tip jar through my online store. If you know someone who is a lynda.com subscriber and is just starting out with Manga Studio, let them know about my new Manga Studio Essentials course. And finally, if you don't have any money, don't worry about it. Subscribe to the Manga Studio Guide on YouTube. Tell your friends. Help me spread the word about the series. Every little bit helps, and it is greatly appreciated. Thank you all so much for your support and for watching this video. I'll see you next time.